There is a substantial risk of loss associated with trading forex, binary options, stocks, or equities, collectively, asset classes. Only risk capital should be used for trading. Trading in any asset classes is not appropriate for everyone. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. No representation is being made that investors will make profits or will not sustain losses. Before trading in any asset classes, investors should consult with their professional broker, financial advisor, or financial consultant to determine whether trading asset classes is appropriate. Investors who trade in any asset classes should only do so if the capital used for this purpose represents funds that an investor can afford to lose without adversely impacting the investor's lifestyle. No trading strategy or methodology is without risk of loss. No trading strategy is risk-free and no trading strategy can guarantee profits or freedom from losses. Investors risk losing the cost to execute any transaction, including associated commissions or fees. You should carefully consider whether trading in any asset class is appropriate for you in light of your investment experience and financial resources. Any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. None of the statements or materials in the Ovoria Prime chat rooms constitute a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell. Welcome to the Weekly Insights for Zeus. Um, I want to give you guys a little bit of an um, inside scoop on what's going on. Uh, Keenan is going to be taking over the Weekly Insights uh, call. Yeah, so let's dive right into it. So just kind of going into fundamental stuff um, as far as um, psychology goes. Uh, there's a quote that I lead with every day, um, a trader who masters patience, masters everything else. Um, we were just talking about how um, if you can integrate that into pretty much everything you do, I think that's the foundation for most successful people. Whether you're learning how to trade or you are um, uh, just anything really, in investing, um, fitness, whatever it is, patience is, is a huge platform to lead with. Um, so really, really important stuff. Um, some of the personal development stuff or the pitfalls or some of the stuff that I've been going through this week. Uh, in the last few weeks um, is emptying your cup uh, and trying to fill other people's cups up. It doesn't work that way. You gotta fill your own cup up, uh, which is one of the reasons that I'm gonna, I'm gonna step back a bit from these weekly insights. Uh, there are days, nights um, that I'm up, 16 hours for the day, back testing, doing logic stuff, just trying to make Zeus better. Uh, and I'm finding that um, my schedule is really all over the place just because sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night, have an idea, integrate it, and then just kind of get that ball rolling. Um, so I'm kind of stepping back so I can do a little more of the development stuff uh, and then I don't enter into these things uh, cup half full. So really, really important to um, realize the things that you're going through and honor those things. And that's what I'm doing right now. I've got to, uh, I love talking to you guys and and um, um, being in the chat and answering questions and stuff. So definitely still like, keep plugged in. If I'm in front of my computer, I'm in front of my phone, so I'm there to answer, answer questions, and, and, uh, uh, but you won't see my face as often. So um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to be full, have some full transparency as far as um, going through that. Because if you empty your cup and you're coming from absolute gas empty uh, or tank empty, uh, your trading is going to be affected, your relationship is going to be affected, your mood, your energy, everything that you do in life is going to be affected uh, and nobody's going to win from that. It's kind of the, the concept when you're flying, you know, you got to put your, your oxygen mask on first, same thing, right? So you got to help yourself before you help other people. Uh, and we're really, we're pushing to make this product even better than it already is. So I really want to um, pick the few things that I'm focused on and do those things. I think anybody can be successful in anything as long as you focus on one thing at a time or a couple things at a time. Um, cause if you focus on, you know, over the course of 10 years, if you just focus on one project once a year and then move on to the next thing, you, it's going to be easy to complete that stuff. Um, but if you focus on 10 things in one year, you're not going to get anything done and then a decade is going to be lost. Right. So, um, yeah, really important stuff, integrating real life stuff with trading, vice versa. So, uh, we want, we, we went over some breath work stuff. I was talking about the polyvagal breathing, um, really, really, really important. There's a couple other practices that I integrate as well, um, just with breath work. Uh, so I, what I would suggest is YouTube, different types of breath work. There's turtle breathing, there's alternate nostril breathing, and it goes back like Vedic times, ancient, um, uh, like traditional Chinese medicine stuff. And so what I would do, I'm not going to go through and show you all of them, but what I would do is go on YouTube, some breath work stuff. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty insane what it can do for your mental clarity. Um, so I try to do that stuff periodically throughout the day. I don't always get it done before I'm trading, but um, as simple as breathing in for three and out for six. Um, so breathing out for twice as long as you breathe in, uh, it just activates your vagus nerve and it calms you down, sends a signal to your central nervous system, says relax, chill out, we're you know, not fight flight. Most people are a fight flight fawn 
um, 90% of the time. So then when you go from regular life into focusing on something like trading or reading or focusing, it's hard because you're just on, um, on fast forward, right? So just stopping, breathing, focusing, uh, and then doing whatever it is that you need to do to focus, right? So, um, yeah, psychology stuff, greed, non-attachment, frustration, um, chasing trades. I know this might seem redundant. I've talked about it the last few weeks, but that's, it's so, so important, probably more important than strategy or, or, um, or fundamentals, price action, anything. This stuff comes first. You learn the price action stuff first, and then you really learn the greed, the psychology, the um, not cutting your losses soon enough, not letting your wins run. Um, yeah, find the play in it, right? And we had a good example. I don't know how many of you guys were on the call, uh, live call with Keenan yesterday. I popped on at like nine EST. I lost two trades back to back. Um, stop loss worked. Uh, and then there was another buy entry. It was in a bit of a bover bought area. I got in anyways. Uh, I was prepared to lose. My stop loss was a little farther away. Um, and so on a 20 pip stop loss, I'm risking half a percent. So that if there's structure and I realize I actually got to move this to 40 pips, I'm only risking 1%. If you right off the hop, you're risking 3% on a 20 pip stop loss, and now you have to move it, you know, another 20 pips, you're, you're over leveraged. You're risking 6% of your account. And on a thousand dollar account, it might not seem like much, but on 100, 200, you know, 300 plus K account, it gets to be overwhelming. And you don't, there's no reason to make more than, you know, 10, 20% on a million dollar account every month. Some people do it, but it's just what's your risk parameters, right? What, what are you willing to, um, yeah, what are you willing to lose, really? Um, and so, yeah, we had, I had a 40 pip stop loss. I re-entered uh, the 20 and 20 pips and drawdown. I had two trades go. I think that overall it was like 130 pips. So those two losses, um, they were, uh, unfortunate and it's easy to just get caught up in those and chase your trades, let go of it, move on to the next one. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good example that I lose, I lose like, I mean, not more than I win, but, um, it happens. It's just the way that it works. The rule you fall, even when you follow the rules, actually the first trade I broke one of the rules, uh, there was an EMA right there and I just wasn't in my brain. So, um, it, it happens. It's the way that it is. But as long as you follow the rules and you have proper risk management, um, you know, excuse me, it's just about compounding that and moving forward. Right. So not chasing your trades is absolutely huge. And it's a good example because, you know, when the developer loses, it, it just shows you the, the humanity that's in it. Right. And so, uh, and it was a great example for like, I think it went, uh, it was 130, so it went like 65 pips um, on each trade, which was crazy. Uh, and yeah, just followed the rules, integrated the trailing stop loss. And yeah, it was a good, I think it was a good example for people to watch the humanity in it. So um, yeah, so, you know, trading is supposed to be fun. It's not about the money. Well, for me, it's not about the money. It's about learning. It's about becoming more self-realized, whatever that means to you. Um, I learn a lot about myself, about patience, about um, markets, everything that goes into that. So um, yeah, finding the play and integrating that because it's supposed to be, for me, it's a game. It's like, I don't know, it's fun. It's, it's, yeah. If you have a, I say this, they say to find what you love, do it for free. Fi sorry, find a way to do what you love, something that you would do for free and get paid for it. Um, and so if that, you know, if that's trading, then sweet. Uh, it can be, it can become a game. It can become really, really stressful, but it's important to just integrate all of these stepping stones. Um, lawyers don't become lawyers overnight. Doctors don't become doctors overnight in pretty much any profession, right? So give yourself some time, make it play, make it fun. Practice, practice on a demo. No reason to go live anytime, um, like especially when you're first starting, you're just gonna rush losing money um, and because it takes a while. It takes a while to get the psychology down. Uh, you might be able to follow arrows, but it's just everything after that, walking away, all the little fundamentals that uh, people talk about, but you don't realize it until you go through it. So, um, yeah, figuring out what try, kind of trader you are. I know that a lot of people are using Zeus on the one hour. Um, they're using it on 30 minute, 15 minute, five minute. I personally do one in five minute. Um, I mainly enter on the one minute arrows. I'm looking at the five minute for structure. Sometimes what'll happen is the one minute it'll miss an entry, but it'll call it on the five minute. So I kind of correlate those two, um, but figuring out, are you a swing trader? Are you a scalper? Uh, do you want to sit in trades for minutes or do you want to sit in trades for, for days or weeks or months, whatever you want to do, right? So uh, I think asking that question first, it's like going to university. What do I want to be when I grow up? I want to be a teacher or a lawyer or a doctor or bus driver or whatever. You don't just go willy nilly and go, oh, let's see what happens. Same thing with trading, figure out what you want. What do you want out of this? Are you trying to create a couple extra hundred bucks a month? Are you trying to have this replace your job? Do you want to sit in front of the screen for six hours a day, an hour a day, 30 minutes, whatever it is. I've got trade. I've got days where I sit down for 15 minutes, enter the trade and I walk away. Like, All right. Well, that was fast. It almost feels like incomplete, but I've also got days where I sit there for six hours cause I'm working. Right. So that's my lifestyle. That's what I 
Um, that's what I lead with. So um, yeah, so it's super important to figure out what kind of trader you are. Um, do, do, do. Breathwork stuff. Yeah, holding positions. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, oh, is that right? Yeah, there we go. Sweet, I'll go share my screen on Zoom. Here we go. Okay, we got some pretty good examples here. Um, so it's really easy to see this arrow, get in, see this little pullback, freak out and get out. Um, really, really important. Just follow the rules, right? Colors, none of these colors changed. And we, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to make it um, the, the, the coloring book of trading, right? So it's really, really important. You cut your losses soon um, and let, how do I say this? Cut your losses early and let your trades ride. Ride for as long as the rules allow you to, right? So uh, I'll go over this again. This arrow, I'm integrating a trailing stop loss with the tether the whole way up, right? Doesn't matter where your take profit is, where your final take profit is, where your take partials is. Um, I'm personally using a 20 pip TP1 and a 40 pip TP2. So it would have been at break even here. I'm taking the smallest amount possible. So on like a one lot, I'm taking 0 0.01. On a three lot, I'm taking 0 0.01. On a 0.1 lot, I'm still taking 0 0.01. Just because I want it to break even, right? And even at this point, you get into this trade, it goes 20 pips, say around here. It would have entered stop loss at break even. I would have moved it a little bit higher. I would have moved it right under the tether. There are times where um, it says stop loss break even. And I actually move it farther away based on where the tether is and where the price is. So um, sometimes you'll get situations like this where you get this arrow and it comes up, maybe got, say you got your 20 pips and then it comes back down and wicks, and wicks you out and then it rallies back up. But a lot of time you get another re-entry, right? So it's really important to just have proper risk management. And even with this, like you wouldn't have, if you had your stop loss underneath the, t the 200, uh, let me see, what is this? If you could have kept it at 20 or moved it up to structure, you would have lost this trade. But then there's another entry, right? So I'd rather have tighter stop losses and lose more often than have huge stop losses and get get kicked out and then you have to you know enter that many more trades to make up for your losses. So um, something I wanna, uh, I've been going over with you guys, obviously you can see Zeus marks up support and resistance for you. Um, really important that you guys just go ahead and try to do that yourself. Um, even just picking something as high, the last little few times we've done um, the uh, month all the way down, really important. Just just find highs and lows. Let's find all the highs, right? There's a peak. There's one. Doesn't have to be perfect, but gives you an idea. So basically, points of points where prices come up and then either rejected off or created some sort of structure, and then. Um, then you can find low. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's actually. Oops, sorry, guys. So there's a pain in the butt. There you go. Mm -hmm. So look for all these highs first. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can see how these highs previously, there's a low. So it creates higher highs, and higher lows, lower highs, lower lows, right? It's just what price does. It's just the way that it works. So if you can integrate and see points of structure, there's a low, there's another low. It's just a good practice. Even though Zeus does it for you, um, it's just a good habit to get into. There you go, you got your highs and your lows. And then see how this correlates to the one minute. There you go. So it gives you a way better idea of kind of where price has been. So we can see it's at a point of resistance here. Let's see what's happened. Let's see. That point, there you go, another point of resistance. See, so it's like price action is king. There's another, there's a point of support right there and look what it did. This was news, I guarantee, this was news yesterday, um, which I try to stay out of, but look. Resistance, resistance. Uh, this is, uh, it should have been a little bit higher, but like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a general 
like this to this, like in here, these two, this would be a zone, right? So it's just getting comfortable with, yeah, you can see zone, zone, zone. Um, so it's just getting comfortable with price, with price action, with price action. Um, let me see here, I'm just gonna go over, uh, let's exit this, I'm gonna go over highs of the day, highs of the week, highs of the month, and then lows of all those days. Let's go to 15 minutes. Uh, and again, we're gonna integrate this into Zeus, so make it even easier for you guys. What do we got going on? Oh, okay, sweet. So it is at a high of a day, 1842. Uh, right, it's right below it. Let's just go here. Let's go low of the day, 1821. Right here, high of the week. Wait, let's make sure that that's right. So this is going to be the high of the month. I lied. 1853. Hmm, where are you? Let's around here. That's the high of the week. Or is it the month? What did I just say? Sorry, guys. Oh, I just exited. Oh. Something's here. Sorry, that was the high of the month. Now the low of the month, right low, 1780. Just say around here. And then the high of the week. High of the week is 1816. A little bit lower than this. Let's see here. And then the low of the week is 1785. Right here. there you go. Uh, so these are some good zones to play around with. This is in the 15 minute. Um, and so you can take highs and lows and integrate fib. Um, this is at a high. This is, you can take, um, there's a high. So how do I say this? A high of the month might become the low of the day and vice versa. So look at this less, not less of highs and lows, but, but market structure, right? Um, and so you can take these highs and lows. So I'm going to, I'm going to forget about highs and lows for a minute and just take this market structure. So you can see that this is a point of structure and this is a point of structure and it's created structure here and it's can kind of consolidate in this area here. So you can take this high to low and figure out a good retracement point. And you can see exactly what it did. Almost had 100% retracement. You can get almost guarantee, not guarantee, but that 38, 50, and 61 level, those are pretty good spots for um, retracement areas. And so let's see, let's see if I can have the fine touch to delete this fib so I don't have to redo all that stuff. Uh, and then same thing for this. So you have. Now you're at this structure and you want to see retracement down. This is, about, this is a point of structure. So I would be looking for price because we're at pretty big highs right now. I would look for price next week to be coming down and hitting this 1819 area, 1813, 1805. You can see that it's created higher highs, boom, boom, boom. And it's kind of messed around in this area. 
Um, it's, I believe it's rejected off this area a couple times. Yeah, see, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Let's see how far back. Oh, whoops. Yeah, there's another one. This one was a little higher. Yeah, so I'd be looking for sells next week. Not only sells, but I would look. I'd be looking for market to rally down for sure. I don't. Know, I don't say for sure, but um, that's my that's my analysis. So, um, yeah, recommended settings. This is what I've been messing around with. I'm practicing for FTMO. Um, oh, never mind. These are these are dev settings for a thousand dollar account. Um, so, this is wrong. There you go. So. Obviously, you know, at a 0 0.01, you're taking 10%. Pretend this is a 1.0 lot size. This is a 10K account. I'm still taking 0 0.01 lot size. So 0 0.01 is obviously the lowest lot you can take. Um, the reason for this is that I want to let these trades ride for as long as possible. The risk that you run into is it goes 20 pips, pulls back and breaks and hits you at break even, or it hits your stop loss at break even and you made no money. If not, maybe a tiny little loss. Maybe, maybe, well, it'll be a couple of pips of profit because that's where our stop loss is set is like two pips in profit. So that's the risk that you run. Now, after it hits that uh, 20 pips break even, uh, after it hits 40, it'll set stop loss to 20 or to your TP1. So now you've locked in 20 pips. You can kind of move around with that, with that trailing stop loss. So I'll show you. Like for instance, how this went 20 and then it went 40. Oops. Set, set stop loss at 20. So what is set stop loss to here? Which would have been good. I would have moved it. And then I would have just trailed it up with the tether. So you probably would have got wicked out. If you didn't get wicked out here because you set your stop loss a little below the tether, you would have got stopped out here. Which to me is like, that's insane. That's, that's a, there you go, 40 pip run. So in this one, you would have got stopped out here. So you got 40 pips, two to one risk reward. Um, and uh, there are times where uh, it'll go without even a bit of retracement to that tether. It'll go 150 pips. I, like I did that the other day where it barely came down to tether and then just went on another huge rally. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I've been. I know that there are beginner, intermediate and advanced settings. This is more an advanced way to trade it. If not, maybe the intermediate, I have to go look at the settings again. Um, but yeah, so I was messing around with pound AUD, US 30, uh, SPX, and gold, um, and just wanted to figure out solid settings for you guys. Uh, I've reverted, reverted back to my old ways. Um, I'm just trading gold. Uh, it's easier for me to trade one thing at a time. Uh, there's enough moves in the market um, that I'm good with that. So um, market structures. Yeah, we went over uh, breakout areas. Um, yeah, so I, that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, I know this was a bit of a shorter call, but... Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, um, oh, I'm not on OBS on AP. Ah, oh, that's okay. Uh, let me see here. Do, uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to, uh, um, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna make sure that there are no questions in, in AP. Sorry, guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, whoops, what am I doing? That's not right. Oh, whoops, that's not right. There we go. Um, there you go. There I am. That's weird. Um, There I am. That's weird. Um.
that's over. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, uh, that was weird. There's a weird lag, so it's weird to hear myself say it and then have there be a delay and then have some and then me say it back to myself. That was weird, but uh, I don't think anybody's in there in the uh, OBS, so that's good. Uh, no questions. Awesome, sweet. Um, yeah, get used to seeing Keenan. He's uh, he's amazing. His uh, his um, knowledge as far as pretty much everything in forex, to be honest, is way over my head. He's like crazy institutional trading. I I, I hear him. I see how he marks his charts up. Um, I'm simply using support and resistance and fib. He's got trend lines and all of this, these wedges and stuff. And that's nothing that I, that's something that I've never really looked at. Um, just because I'm not, I don't know. I've never done it. Uh, I'm a, I'm a scalper. So I'm looking at really small time frames, and, um, I, instead of marking trend lines up, I can just kind of see them in my head. So it's really good to have somebody like Keenan who is, he's built for this. He's built for these calls. He's built for education. So. Um, absolute genius. So I'm, I'm very grateful that he's integrated into this system so that, um, yeah, so I can focus on other stuff and, you know, start keep, uh, yeah, keep building the solid product. So, um, yeah, if nobody has any questions, um, I'm going to call it and, um, yeah, if you guys do have questions, free feel to reach out in the traders chat. Um, I'm pretty much on my phone all the time. So if I'm not answering, uh, it's the rare time that my phone is not beside me. So, um, but yeah, guys, hope you have a good day and I uh, hope that was really straightforward. And again, if you guys have questions. There is a substantial risk of loss associated with trading Forex, binary options, stocks, or equities, collectively, asset classes. Only risk capital should be used for trading. Trading in any asset classes is not appropriate for everyone. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. No representation is being made that investors will make profits or will not sustain losses. Before trading in any asset classes, investors should consult with their professional broker, financial advisor, or financial consultant to determine whether trading asset classes is appropriate. Investors who trade in any asset classes should only do so if the capital used for this purpose represents funds that an investor can afford to lose without adversely impacting the investor's lifestyle. No trading strategy or methodology is without risk of loss. No trading strategy is risk-free and no trading strategy can guarantee profits or freedom from losses. Investors risk losing the cost to execute any transaction, including associated commissions or fees. You should carefully consider whether trading in any asset class is appropriate for you in light of your investment experience and financial resources. Any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. None of the statements or materials in the Ovoria Prime chat rooms constitute a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell.